Hi, I'm Jen Drummond. Welcome to Seek Your Summit. As a mom, a business owner, and the first female to climb the seven second summits, I realize that the mountains we climb are a part of our success. And it is up to us to go beyond that success into a life of significance. All right, so on the podcast today, I'm so excited about this one. I have Amy Lacey. Amy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes. You're I'm so excited to meet you. Isn't it fun? I've heard so much about you and I'm just in awe because oh. you are, can we cuss? Yes. You're a badass. Yes. Like I, so are you. I want to interview you. We will do that. Whatever. Okay. It'll all come out. <laughs> this is what this interview is for. I want to know more about you. Yes. Okay. But you, so what I love about you is that you got diagnosed with lupus, yes. which is a huge shift on so many levels, which I'll let you tell the story instead of mine, which started your business. Yeah. Okay. So talk to us about this whole thing. So it was right after I had my third child. Okay. And so I think something triggered in that having that child, something happened with my body and I turned 40 yeah. and all hell broke loose. So one mm -hmm. day I could not get out of bed. Now it was a Saturday morning mm -hmm. and I had this tradition. So if I backtrack a little bit and you can appreciate this, having as many kids as you have, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you have little traditions, little, like you set up little things. So we had Friday night family fun night, which was pizza and board games or pizza and movies. Yes. So I grew up without a family. Basically, I would, for a while, I was homeless. I lived in a foster care. My dad was an alcoholic drug addict. My mom was a single mom struggling. So I always, I didn't have religion in my life or anything, but I can remember as a little girl praying for a family. And I think God answered that prayer because yes. I've been married 26 years, oh. even though counselors say that I'm like in the top <laughs> half percent that I should be living on the streets. I've been married 26 years. I have three kids. So for me, it was like I read every book on how to be a parent. Well, mm -hmm. probably not every book. No, but, but we do that, right? When yeah. it's our first, especially yeah. like all the things. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I want to plant traditions, it's things I never had. Like, I don't remember anyone reading to me or having a I family. didn't have Elf on the Shelf. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm too old for that. But I did enjoy, like I live vicariously through my kids still even to this day. So I had this Friday night family fun night. So it was a, it was a thing. And then one Saturday morning, I couldn't get out of bed. Mm. Like literally, I was in so much pain, had so much swelling. And so long story short, I was rashed out. I had pulmonary embolisms. So I was in the hospital for over a week. Mm. had two of them in my lungs. And then the doctors put me on mass amounts of steroids. And then they did all the tests. And they're like, okay, you have lupus and Sjogren's. So the Sjogren's is still active today. But okay. the lupus is not, okay. which is great. And I'm off all medications. So they put me on, uh, they gave me shots of steroids, which I had to give myself at home, which if you have ever been on steroids, it keeps you awake at night. It makes you cray cray. It like, make, no, I was on steroids just a little bit ago to recover from a surgery because I was swelling so bad. And, and I, I'm like, can we fix this? And they gave me six days. And they're like, hey, just to let you know, you might get a little like anxiety ridden. Oh. I'm like, well, I don't have anxiety. I had anxiety. Oh. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't tell me what's going on. Everything seems high priority and I don't know what to prioritize. There is a prison and I can't say the name because they'll probably sue me. There's a prison that uses steroids as a form of like in isolation, like they, it's like a punishment. torture, punishment. A hundred percent. So on the dose that I was on, you did not sleep. And so I literally became like the cray cray mom and wife, which was yeah. worse than being sick, really. And then they put me on a drug called Plaquenil, which is the drug that everybody talked about during COVID. Everybody wanted that drug because supposedly it was the, you know, if you got COVID, it was going to make you safe and not get on a ventilator and all this BS stuff. Mm -hmm. So Plaquenil has terrible side effects. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I have to figure out how to get off these meds. But I went prior to that, I went through a really deep depression. Like I, I gained a ton of weight. Mm. I was pretty much unable to walk for nine months. Mm. And I had had a surgery. And it was just, it was a very low time for me. Mm -hmm. And it, I can honestly say through all the stuff I've been through as a child, this was like the lowest point in my life. Like wow. literally, I remember calling my husband at work and saying, I know I have a life insurance policy. 
does it, is it covered? And I, I never talked about this, but I feel like it's so important to talk about it now, especially yeah. with our kids and stuff. I said, does it cover, would you get the payout if I committed suicide? And oh, he's like, goosebumps. I'm coming home right now. What are you talking about? You've never said the S word before. Yeah. And I'm like, Jim, you deserve, a, a, like, I can't take care of our kids. Like our youngest went to live with my in-laws because he was two. Like I couldn't take care of him. I couldn't pick him up. Oh, and so we had to hire somebody to come in the house and do basic things like laundry. So I was really depressed and he was he was so supportive and so great. But one day I woke up and I was like, and this is shortly after that phone call. I was like, no, this is BS. Like, I can do this. I'm strong enough. I've been through worse. I can get over this. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to get off these meds because that's what's causing me to be depressed because I'm not sleeping and I'm crazy. Yeah. And so I actually met with somebody his name is Rob Wolf. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Okay. He was a big paleo guy. He created the first CrossFit gym in Northern California where I lived. And I used to do CrossFit before I got sick. So I met with him and I'm like, Rob, what, what do you think I can do? Because the doctors are just putting me on this stuff. I need help. I don't know what to do. And he's like, well, let's do an elimination diet on you. Let's oh, figure it out because I believe food is medicine. Yeah. And so we did that. And it turned out that gluten... And grains, like white rice, which I love sushi. It's one of my favorite foods. White rice was causing inflammation. So was that Friday night pizza. Uh, that was causing problems. And then when I look back on it, I can remember that I would wake up Saturday morning usually with a tummy ache. Sometimes I would be rashed out. And I we lived in the canyon at the time. And I used to think our golden retrievers were bringing in poison oak. I used to treat myself with topical steroids thinking it was poison ivy or poison oak. Anyways, I did the elimination diet. I wanted to recreate family fun night because it was lost for nine months. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get some normalcy back in our family life. And so I went online. And I started looking for a grain-free, gluten-free pizza crust. In the stores, all that was there was Udi's and it's just loaded with Everything. garbage. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, well, that's not an option. And there weren't all the options that we have today. So I found this Rachel Ray recipe online, actually, which is funny. It's a full circle moment because we ended up at Cauliflower. We ended up being on Rachel Ray oh, and funny. donating to a soup kitchen. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I took the Rachel Ray recipe and I went ahead and tried it. And it was an epic failure. Like it was just a hot mess. Have you ever tried to cook a cauliflower pizza crust before from scratch? Um, no, because I burn water, so I'm not allowed to do anything in the kitchen. So <laughs> that you. sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was an epic mess, and I tried it again. It was a mess. I think I tried it about nine times and failed. Oh, and my wow. daughter, who was little at the time, she's like, Mom, you've been juicing, because Rob had me juicing. She's like, why don't you run the cauliflower through the juicer, and it'll get the moisture out, and I think the pizza crust will hold up. Bam, it worked. Wow. And it was great. My oldest is super picky. He doesn't eat vegetables. So I was able to sneak the cauliflower into the pizza crust and he was eating it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm on to something here. Because with cauliflower, it was a vegetable I never ate. Because I right, mean, right. it's like the last vegetable standing. There's no a, flavor to it. Yeah, so it's not like you're excited tray, about it. Yes. <laughs> on a veggie tray at a party, it's the last one standing. Like nobody <laughs> eats it. So basically, it's, it's more appropriate to put the um, cauliflower in there than your finger to get the ranch dressing. Yeah. That's the only reason why it's there. But yeah, totally. True. So the thing about cauliflower that I didn't know that I learned is it's so bland. Like you said, it takes on whatever flavors you put with it. Mm -hmm. So you could make all kinds of things. So I started making taco shells and all the things I liked out of cauliflower, even cauliflower cookies, oh, wow. which sounds disgusting, but you can hide it, hide the uh, chocolate in there. So... Yeah, it was a great hit. And then I started sharing it with friends and family. And in the process of healing and getting off the meds, I lost the weight. And then people noticed and the people started asking me if I could help them. So I became kind of a health coach, but mainly for um, people with diabetes. Mm. And it turns out that the pizza crust is low carb, no sugar, and diabetics could eat it. So then one of my friends said, you should take it to farmer's market because the farmer's market in Northern California is pretty popular. It's like ranked, I don't know, sixth in the country. And it would be a fun thing for you to do with your kids and teach them how to work, which I know you appreciate. Yes. And I know you put your kids in tough situations so they can learn how to handle that, which is 
you know, same, same. Yeah. So learn how to speak to adults, learn how to run a little business at farmer's market. That was my whole intention with it was to get my two older kids out there. And so pretty soon local stores wanted it. And so I'm like, okay, we got to figure out packaging. I got to get a cottage license, you know, and mm -hmm. I found myself like up till three in the morning making pizza crust. I'm like, okay, this isn't working <laughs> with my lifestyle. It's going to make me sick again. Um, so I hired a co-packer and an industrial kitchen and we started making them. And then I started getting pre-orders from the stores and it started getting bigger, bigger and bigger. And the thing that made the business go viral is I had this one customer that lived like an hour and a half away. She was a single mom. So single moms are near and dear to my heart. She had four kids. The youngest was nonverbal autistic. And the doctor put her on a low carb diet. Her name is Kenzie. She's four years old. So she was not talking. And so Jesse, her mom, reached out to me and said, hey, I know you have these pizza crusts and I need to put her on a low carb diet. And I'm wondering if I can get, if you would donate some of your pizza crust to us. I said, absolutely. You're a single mom? Yeah, sure. All day. You know, all day. So we end up sending pizza crust up to Redding, California for like seven months. And, it, and every month we're sending a bunch of them up there. And it was, it was great. Like she was saying she loves them. Things are going really good. And one day I get a call from her and she's like, Amy, can you come visit me? I have a surprise for you. And I said, sure. So I drove up there to visit her. Jesse opens the door. Jesse's lost a hundred pounds <gasps> because in order for Kenzie to eat, Jesse had to sit down and eat with her. So she started eating low carb, basically a keto diet without wow. calling it keto. Right. And Kenzie comes to the door and says, thank you for the pizza crust. Nonverbal says And she's thank talking. You. It was... Oh yeah. my God, I can't even imagine. I'd be sobbing. I'm like close to sobbing right now. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm not. I was... <laughs> I was just like, it gives me chills. Yes. So we were there. I'm like, we have to videotape this. We have to take pictures. Like, I'm so excited. This is awesome. You yeah. know, Jesse, thank you for sharing this with me. So we did a bunch of pictures and um, about, I guess it would be about three months later. I'm in New Zealand, actually, which is where my husband's family's from. And I'm like on my hands and knees praying because the business is great. We're helping a lot of people, people like Jesse, yep. but it's not making any money. Mm -hmm. And the margins were outrageous. Like it was costing me $6 to make a pizza crust. No, there was like no margins. And I had basically used up all our savings. We were remodeling our house. I used up that budget. Like we had no garage. <laughs> and I was looking at Jim who was asleep, my husband, and I was just like on my hands and knees praying. And I'm like, God, People are benefiting from this. I benefit from it. Like either you shut it down mm -hmm. or make something happen because I can't keep going like this. Like the next thing is our retirement and our investments. And I can't do that to Jim. Like nobody believed in it. I had so many no's. Like I tried to get really? it in bigger stores and people are like, no, nobody will eat a cauliflower pizza crust. No, 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 no. So in my head, and it's probably comes from being scrappy in my childhood, no just means next opportunity. Yeah. Like I just no figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I said that prayer, and this is no joke. Three days later, I get a dream. I have a dream that I'm supposed to share Jesse's story. So I have one employee at this time, mm -hmm. and I call her, and I say, I think we're supposed to share Jesse's story. I'm not sure how. I guess on Facebook. I'm not sure. This is 2016, 2017. Okay. And she goes, well, you better ask Jesse. So yep. I call Jesse and Jesse's like so excited. She's like, I'll be the Jared of Subway without the perversion. <laughs> I want to be the Jesse of Cauliflower Foods. So we run the story on Facebook and they shut us down because they don't like at the time they wouldn't allow weight loss. I don't know if they do now. No. But they wouldn't do the before and afters. I'm like, well, let's share Kenzie's story. Jesse's all about Kenzie's story to begin with. So we shared that and it went viral. And in January of 2017, we made more money than we had the entire year of 2016. Oh, wow. And by the end of 2018, we were selling a pizza crust every five seconds online. What? Yes. So it went, the business went from negative 269,000 in 2016 to over 20 million by the end of 2018. Oh. And then I got a book deal and yes. I wrote a cookbook. Yes. And I'm like, you, I'm not a chef, <laughs> but I got labeled as a chef. I started getting invited to the New York food show. I started, like, all these things were happening and it was crazy. 
it was such a God thing. I mean, yeah, I don't know course, how you feel about your yes, faith. Yes, 100% but, it is a God thing. Yeah, it was crazy. Three days after I had that dream, we posted, got shut down, reposted, and it went viral. So oh. you hear people talk about going viral. I actually know what it means to go viral. Right. I wish I would go viral with Soursop. You will. <laughs> it's it coming. Out. We're planting the seed. <laughs> well, yes. now it's no longer Facebook. I guess it's TikTok. Right. So, um, yeah, so that story and... You know, it changed Jesse's life. Yeah. She became a health coach. It oh. changed her life. Think of how many other lives that you don't even know that it changed. Right? Oh, the, and you know, I talk about the five P's in my business, in particular with Cauliflower, and one of them is perseverance. And you know, there's, you know, this, there's a lot of highs and there's a lot the of lows, lows, but there's not a lot in between. Like, how do you balance it? Yeah. And I think the way that I kept going through all the fail failures, because I mean, even though it I tell you about the success. There were so many failures to get there. But what kept me going is the letters I received. Yeah. I was getting letters from people that were like, this is changing my life. I'm like, really? A cauliflower pizza crust is changing your life. Well, you know what? It created, we were the first on the market. It created a billion dollar category. Now, it's funny because Liz Clayman interviewed me on Fox News and she called me the billionaire. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's my dream now for my next company. Right. Yes. I created a billion dollar category, but I'm not a billionaire. But not we did, yet. We did have an exit, which I'm proud to say in the exit, I am in the top 4% of women to get venture capital money. Yes. Like I did, especially in the food industry. And that was in 2019 that I ended up selling a big chunk of it to venture capitalists. Mm -hmm. But that's the cauliflower story, cauliflower pizza crust. Soon after, uh, you know, cauliflower rice came out yeah. and I wrote a cookbook with 125 cauliflower recipes, anything from cookies to, you know, desserts to pizza crust to bread. I'm probably going to blame you for the reason why I put cauliflower ground up in my kids' mac and cheese. Like it was <laughs> yes. a way to get some fiber into their exactly. mac and cheese, right? And, yeah. And now like now you have the the thing that always happens in every industry is you get these copycatters, but you get Set garbage. Region. So yeah. like, I hate to say this, but Kraft has Kraft <sighs> cauliflower mac and cheese and it's garbage. Mm -hmm. And then I hate to say this too, because I love her, but Oprah came out with a cauliflower pizza crust and you might as well have eaten a regular Domino's pizza crust. Oh, geez. Like, you know, she didn't yeah. create it. Somebody else did. And they just... They just did it to make to to ride the yeah wave. ride the wave. Okay, so when you sold out to the VC, a good chunk of things, what like were you were you lost? Were you bored? Were you sad? Uh, Whatever, because you got into something else. So there was yeah. something going on that you're like, hey, I need more. Yeah. So interesting because at 46, I was 46 when I started the exit process, and okay. I did that for many reasons. One of the big reasons is um, there was a massive fire in Northern California yeah, that, that burned down an entire town. And mm -hmm. it happened to be where my mom, my stepdad, and my aunt, who has no children, live. Mm. And now I'm very close to them. And so their houses actually didn't burn down, but you couldn't live in them. So they didn't get the insurance money. So they were in my house in Chico, California, is where I lived, about a half hour away. And I'm like, oh my gosh, now I've got all these people in my house. Nobody has any money and nobody's getting insurance. So I'm going to need to figure out a way to, like, I'm going to have to act on these people that are asking me if I want capital. Because we took no capital in. Mm -hmm. We had EBITDA. We were, we were, by now I've got the margins down. We are doing awesome. So yeah, that's where, that's where it started. And it was about a six month time where I finally picked, I had several offers mm -hmm. and I didn't pick the highest offer and I picked a medium offer because they were so, they were out of Boulder, Colorado. They had a lot of experience in grocery and Nestle, who was grooming me, who mm -hmm. brought me out to speak to them, they were telling me I needed to be in more grocery stores. So I thought these were the perfect venture capitalists, but it wasn't so perfect. And mm. I've learned that a lot of people experience exactly what I experienced. But at the time, I didn't know it was going to happen to me. Nobody warned me that this could potentially happen. So in conversations with them, and by the way, this happened, I went to Boulder to actually meet them because all the conversations were via phone or Zoom. And I get into a boardroom and there's 13 men and one woman mm. and me. Mm-hmm. 
And the woman, I could tell, was not part of the business, even though they claimed she was. She <sighs> she did not know. And I learned later she was a plant to make me feel more comfortable, which just pissed me off. <laughs> She's like one of the venture capitalist <laughs> girlfriends, now wife. But she had no idea what she was talking about. And I could tell. And so I called him out on it. But yeah, that was really insulting. So anyways, they said they would never, I would always be on the board. Okay. They would never change the recipe. And my team could come along and they would be a part of their team. The first thing they did was they fired my team. Mm. And these are people that were friends mm -hmm. that came along because I had no money to hire anybody. But they had just, the story they, and the sweat equity yeah. and the like they believed in yes, it. Yes. And they were, and I didn't set them up with equity. This company, they're set up with equi equity. But they were... They were friends. They were coming along because they were like, Amy, we never see you. And I'm like, well, come join me because I'm so busy early yeah. on. Yeah. And back in like farmer's market days. And so, yeah, they all got fired. And then um, they changed the recipe. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, they added psyllium husk, which is actually really good. They they did some good things with the recipes. But they also did some really bad things that hurt the reputation of the brand, I think. And then they put me on sabbatical. And they said, we think you need a rest because you have been – now they replaced me as a CEO and I willingly was mm -hmm, fine mm -hmm. with that because I needed to go back to being a mom. But they said, we think you need a break and it'll be a paid sabbatical. And I'm like, I don't need a sabbatical. Like I need you guys to not forget about the e-com business that built this brand to over $20 million. Mm -hmm. You're not grooming the email list. You're letting that go. We made $6 million off of email. So get your email list if you don't have one is my advice. By the way, I think podcasts, I said this on Jen's podcast yesterday, podcasts were my MBA for business. Oh, I believe it. I listened to The Power of Email by Jeff Walker. Boom, I started email. Good for you. And by the end of 2018, we did $6 million in email. So get your email list. You email, own it. email, email, email. Nobody can take that away from you. Yes. So I really believe in the email list, definitely. And then I use Story Brand by Donald Miller to yep. share Jesse's story. That's how we got that out there. Wow. Again, a podcast. Yes. And then later on, I ended up hiring Don to work with my whole team. Yeah. So Don and JJ worked with us. So the power of podcasts. So listen, keep, listen, keep listen. listening to these yeah. podcasts. They're they're definitely educational. So yeah, they while I was on sabbatical, they changed all my passwords. <gasps> And they said, you are no longer part of this business because you're giving us such a hard time. Now, I was. I was lacking emotional intelligence because Cauliflower Foods was my fourth child. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a child for mm -hmm. me. And so I use the analogy now, now that I have kids that are dating, it's like your kid dating somebody that you don't like <laughs> yes. and you tell them you don't like it and they push you away because they're so into this 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 uh, romance or whatever you want to call it, the girlfriend, the boyfriend. Yeah, that's exactly how it was. Every time I fought them on something with econ, and I remember the new CEO said to me, he's like, buyers don't look at social media. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Buyers are looking at social media. You are you are a dinosaur. Yeah. Like that's how we got into Walmart. Right. She looked at one of our influencers. She well, she was in Walmart. Kudos to Walmart cuz I'll tell the Walmart Walmart story really quick. I was not a fan of Walmart. Okay. I was kind of anti Walmart to yeah. be honest with you. And they ended up calling me and this is before I sold to the venture capitalists. They called me and they said we'd love for you to come out to Bentonville. Mm -hmm. home of Walmart, like mm -hmm. Walmart gas stations, Walmart, everything in Bentonville. It's almost like a scene out of a movie. It's kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, we'd love for you to come out. We really want to have your product in our stores. So I'm like, Walmart? No, that's not our, that's not that's our, our demographic. No, we're right. Whole Foods, Sprouts. That's, that's yeah, yeah, our yeah. demographic. But I went because Walmart. my, my mentor well is like, uh, Walmart never calls anybody or Target never calls anybody. When they call you, go, Amy. This is not like the time where they're doing these meetings, like go. Well, it turns out that Walmart decided they were going to up their game in the health space. And they they basically gave severance packages to all these old men, buyers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they hired these young nutritionists, dietitians, and this woman, this girl, young girl, dietitian is going to clean up the frozen section in Walmart. So she happens to love this influencer that worked really closely with us named Erin Opria. Mm -hmm. 
If you've ever heard of Erin, she's a trainer to she's a trainer in Nashville, and she claims Carrie Underwood's legs. Like okay. she's like, I took Carrie Underwood from American Idol, and those legs are mine. <laughs> I love her. And she, yeah, she. Um, kind of I'm a squirrel moment she did a pizza party for us and she's like only about 15 people are going to come in and it was my team and her at this restaurant in comes Martina McBride and I'm like oh oh my gosh and she was working on her cookbook at the same time I was working on mine so we sat at a table together and talked Alan Jackson's daughters and wife were there I mean it was like whoa pinch me moment Mm -hmm. so anyways the buyer loved Erin loved what she made Got our pizza crust from seeing it on Instagram. Wow. Tried Erin's recipe and it's like, I need these in every store. So she's like, I want every skew in every store. Well, my mentor's like, do not do that. Like that is, if you go every skew in every store and they decide they don't want you, yeah, and they'll turn you, you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. So we started off slow. And that was also one of the reasons why I wanted to sell because I was like, okay, now I'm, now I'm going to be, you know, all these units. 4,000 stores, like, I need help. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. really not experienced in this. So, yeah, so we grew in stores. Walmart ended up being our biggest account. Wow. Yes, we did millions at Walmart. Wow. That's so never awesome. underestimate. <laughs> but, you know, don't, I don't know. Maybe Just it was explore. A, Just a stay curious. Just on yes. the grocery stores. But, yeah, so it was, it was really painful. So to answer your question, yeah, I... When they took over and put me on sabbatical, I found myself in that depression again. Oh, I can only imagine. I was, I got really depressed. Well, to move my family out of Northern California, I told my husband, where do you want to live? Because you've always lived in Northern California for me. Where do you want to live? And he's like, I want to live on the water somewhere. And I think we should live like where my brother is. So we moved to Florida. So I moved my parents to Florida. I moved my aunt to Florida. And we bought our dream house on the water. I mean, I had everything made. Like the kids are thriving. They love Florida. My youngest is a surfer now. They love it. So everybody's thriving, but everybody would go to school and go to work. And there you are. And I would pretend like I was happy and they would all be out of the house. And I was like, what do I do with myself? And I found myself in a deep depression again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard because you're like, I live this dream life on the outside. Why am I greedy and wanting more? Why can't I just be happy with what I have? I've been in that spot and it's horrible because you don't know where to go with those emotions because you feel shame. Yes. And you know what? I realize at that moment, money doesn't buy you happiness because I had the money and I had the dream house and I was miserable, but I didn't have a purpose. Like I didn't, I couldn't see any way out of it. And now I see, well, if you can really I tell people this, if they're in a big depression, go and serve, Serve. go volunteer. It's the best way to get out of depression. Like don't take a antidepressant, go exercise, go like change the way you eat, get more sleep and then volunteer. It's like the best way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a really hard time. And then, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I had an episode with my son, which is not my story to share here, Mm -hmm. but it basically threw me into counseling. Mm-hmm. And the counselors are like, you have a lot of trauma from your childhood mm-hmm. and you need to deal with it. And now's the time to deal with it. So I went into outpatient therapy while I was on this permanent sabbatical for 16 months. And I didn't share for a long time because I felt embarrassed, shame. Mm-hmm. I felt like um, people wouldn't take me serious. Mm-hmm. But now I talk about it because my DM blows up every time I talk oh, about it. I bet. So 16 months of therapy, three days a week, like three hours a day. Like, Good for you. Dive deep. I did. And I did trauma therapy because okay. I had unresolved trauma. Well, it turns out unresolved trauma is what makes you sick. Go back to lupus. Yes. I believe the unresolved trauma. I was Manifested in your body. Yes, manifested in my body. I had buried so much. I had been, uh, when I was on the street, I put myself in a really bad situation where I was sexually assaulted. So that was a story that I kept hidden for a long time from everybody. Mm -hmm. So I was 12 years old Mm. and a 22 year old Marine. Um, Yeah. So we don't have to go into that story, but I buried that. So that was one of the things I did EMDR on, which I'm a huge fan. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yes. I had never heard of it, but it's like, you're looking, you're like a third party looking at the incidents and you can see 
the reality of it and get over it. It's yes. that simple, actually. Yes. It's not simple, but it, it, it just changes <clears throat> the perspective, which yes. changes the story, which puts you from victim to victor. Exactly. And things shift. I love that victim to victor. Yeah. Yes. So I share it now. And it's interesting because the first time I ever shared it, there was 10 women in the room. Five of them had been sexually assaulted. Yeah. And one of them had been sexually assaulted by another woman. <gasps> yes. Wow. In junior high by her PE coach. Oh, geez. So it's just, it's out there and people don't talk about it. So I talk about it. But I also talk about forgiveness because I learned how to forgive. And it wasn't, you know, I forgave my mom, my dad, who's now passed away because he drank himself to death. Okay. But he too put me in some really bad situations in the short time that I had a relationship with him. But forgiveness was not for them per se. It was more for me. And did you find that the hardest person to forgive is yourself? Absolutely. Because that's been my journey, right? Like I can forgive other people, but then forgiving myself has been the hardest part of that. And I did a lot of that in therapy, like yeah. learning to forgive myself. I, when we were busy with Cauliflower, I was gone more than I was home. Mm -hmm. And my husband's a physician. So mm -hmm. he had to cut his practice down. And they used to call him Dr. Mom. Like he took over. Mm -hmm. And even I can see the effects of that with my youngest with him. They're very, very tight. And I, I can't break into that. I don't have the same relationship with him as I do with my older two. So it, because those formative years, I was gone more. And I kept thinking, okay, this is temporary. When I sell it, we're going to be, yeah, we'll be right, golden. Right. Yeah. So therapy was good, but, you know, I went through a year of depression and it was during COVID. And so oh. I could blame it on COVID, but really it was just, I had my whole purpose was in that business. My whole identity was wrapped up in that business. And truth be told, I was on a lot of shows like Dr. Oz, The Doctors, Home and Family. I'd written the cookbook. I had a lot of attention. And I think that's what I really loved. And I yeah. think my faith tells me, you know what? I got a little too into myself and forgot what I was doing right. and who I should be serving. And it was taken away from me like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very mindful of that now, but I got, I, I was really, if I look back on it. Well, there's just really so much that feeds it, mm -hmm. right? Like it's really hard to, like when I first set the world record and then you yeah. get all the news and all the excitement and all the other things. And I consciously decided to take a year off, which was the hardest year of my life because it was so opposite of everything that happened before. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, if I don't teach my kids what a season of winter looks like, how are they going to so learn smart. it? And it, so it, and so like sometimes it's so easy to do mm -hmm. that I like my challenge really is learning how to be. And so this is the hard part of that, but I'll get through it. But oh, it's I a love thing. that. I love that. You know, you know, you're healed when you can be content and be alone. Yes. And so one of the things I had to do during therapy was go to this camp in Tennessee where you surrender all your electronics and you're alone and you have to hike alone. You have to hike to this place, which I got lost, which was even more phenomenal because I got lost mm -hmm. and I had to figure out my way myself. And that was, that was crazy because yes. it's so hard to just be in a room with no electronics, <laughs> no access Everything. to the outside world. Right. All you are is here you're just tape. there with yourself. Yes. No books, no journals, no nothing, no TV, nothing. Right. I don't watch TV anyways, but I probably would have that weekend. But yeah, that was intense. And you're right. The hardest person that I had to forgive was myself. And I had to forgive myself for being gone so much and for wrapping myself up into that business and that identity of, yeah, I'm on this show. Yeah, I'm doing this. Like, it just was very self-serving. And yeah. so... That's the cauliflower story. Yeah. There's more to it that goes on afterwards, which is more of the venture capitalist story. But during that low time, my mom got diagnosed with cancer, okay. breast cancer. Oh, geez. And the person that helped me build cauliflower, my right hand person, at the very same time also got diagnosed with breast cancer. So I went into this, and this is like during the time where I'm in therapy. So I'm healing and I start doing a lot of research for them. Now, my right-hand person was going holistic, and mm -hmm. my mom was doing radiation chemo. So I took my mom to every appointment. I had the luxury of doing that. Thank you, venture capitalists, for putting me on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Now I have gratitude because yes. I could be at every full appointment. Full circle moment. For a full circle of yep. gratitude there. 
That's another way to get out of anger is you can't be, I believe you can't have gratitude and be angry at the same time. Yep. So if there's somebody or something that you're really angry about, if you can write a list of what you're grateful for, which I did, I have all these lists of the venture capitalists. I was so angry and all these gratitude <laughs> lists for yeah. them. And one of them was the fact that I had my time and my days back and I could take my mom. But in the meantime, I'm looking at holistic ways and even to help my mom and I discover the fruit soursop. Yeah. And how did you discover this? Like where? So it's grown in the Caribbean. Right. But if you Google soursop in cancer, which I can never promote it for cancer. No. It is very powerful okay. in what it does. And so I knew that it would, along with other ingredients like turmeric and other ingredients that we've combined to make our shakes, I knew it was going to be a very powerful regimen for my good friend, project manager, person. Um it would help her. I knew yeah. it would. And then I knew it was going to help my mom as well. So I was experimenting with it as well. And I was like, wow, my inflammation. Because when you go full circle again, I was getting sick again. I was inflamed. I started gaining weight again, which I'm still trying to combat because now I've gone through menopause mm -hmm. and all of that. So soursop was helping my inflammation levels. And, and I was never going back on steroids or Plaquenil. So it was really helping me with that. And I'm like, okay, there's something really good about this. But it's grown in the Caribbean. It's also grown here in Miami. Hmm. But to get it, it's like $30 a piece of fruit. Oh, geez. So I'm like, <laughs> nobody can afford this. And I'm paying like hundreds of dollars to get this fruit and make these shakes. So how can I make it into an affordable, clean supplement? Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Yeah. That way everybody can have it. And so we combined it. The, the gummies are with echinacea and elderberry, which helps with immunity building and anxiety. And it, I mean. And the, who doesn't love a gummy? I mean, I didn't do <laughs> vitamins at all. And then when they turned them into gummy format, I'm like, and I'm like, what happens if you overeat vitamins, you know, or, so, or vitamin C gummies, uh, please, all day? I know. So it is jam-packed with vitamin C. And we are actually reformulating and changing okay. the dosage. So it's more, it's going to be more like an adult fruit snack because it's yes. all just fruit. Like you don't have to just have two a day. I actually brought you some today. Yeah, so I'm so try. excited. And yes. Um, yeah. So, the, and then we made the shakes and we added like turmeric and magnesium and all these ingredients to the shakes to uh, make them really powerful. So that's how that came about. And how is that going? Like being in a different arena with a new product and it's, all that? Well, okay. So one part of the story I didn't tell you is when my friends got fired, yeah. they stopped speaking to me. Because, no way. And now I, at the time I was very upset and now I can see their perspective. I sold the company. They yeah. were supposed to still work. Yep. I moved from where we all work together, shut yep. that office down. We also had a little pizza restaurant. We shut, they, the venture capitalist shut that down, shut that office down. So they didn't have an office. They didn't have the restaurant that we used to all hang mm. at. And it was a little pizza bar in a grocery store. Actually, it wasn't a restaurant. And so their whole world was turned upside down. And then I moved to Florida in my dream house on the water. So they're thinking, oh, she sold the company and she bailed on us. Yeah. And that's not what happened at all. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't speak to me. And they had their own healing that they had to do. Mm -hmm. Ironically, they're all back with me now and we're ah. building this company again. And oh. I've had people say to me, how, how could you hire them after they did that to you? I'm like, I can see what they went through. Yeah. I know what they went through. We This was like a family business. Like we built this together. It wasn't just me building Cauliflower. They built it too. And they got nothing out of it, but a small bonus. Now, my right-hand person, I definitely made sure she was taken care of when mm -hmm. I took money off the table. And um, But this time, and if you have a business and you have people that are just hungry, humble, with strong emotional intelligence, and they're just rock stars, give them some equity. Mm -hmm. So I have it set up this time. I didn't know any better last time. Yeah. Now it's set up, so we have equity. The other thing I've done is I didn't raise capital last time. Mm -hmm. This time I raised capital and mainly from angel investors, mm -hmm. like women. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So there are a couple, few good men in there. there we need both. <laughs> we need both to move the needle. We've got so some that's doctors good. too. We've okay. got a neurosurgeon, which I love because there is an article in 2017 that talks about neurological disorders that can happen eating soursop. And 
it's mainly just the seeds or drinking the tea leaves, but it it's it's just it's silly. It's like if you drink too much water, you can die. Yeah. Tylenols on the shelves. And if you eat too much Tylenol, you can die. It's like everything in moderation. And who's going to eat the seeds anyways? So Mm -hmm. he's there to like make that disclaimer and and back us on that because it's come up a little bit because that article's out there. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's great to start another business because I made so many mistakes with the first one. And now I know like little things like your audience may not know this. If you have a website, you have a website. Yes. Is it handicap compliant? I'm going to send you. I bet it's not. Okay. So there's. I have no idea how. There's little trolls that go out there. And if they see that you're not handicap compliant, they threaten to sue you. And the only way out of it is to pay them $10,000. And it's a legit thing. Do you own your fonts on your website? You got to buy your fonts. Trolls. Wow. As soon as you get really successful, they yeah, look for ways to, to come you. out you. So yeah. another 12 grand to the person that said they owned, they bought our fonts. So little things like that. I'm like, okay, girls, make sure our website's candy hat compliant. You all out there, make sure. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you get really successful, they'll find you. Yes. And buy your fonts, own your fonts, buy your domain, yep. file your trademark and your word mark. I didn't file both. And so there's a competitor in the cauliflower space called Cauliflower. She came out after us. She filed. She took the O and made it a cauliflower, and that was our logo. <gasps> and she could do it all day long because I didn't file properly. Wow. So my lesson on that one that I've changed on this one, and it is expensive, hence why I raised capital, hire really good attorneys. Yeah. I had a really cheap attorney. Okay for cauliflower who never warned me who never told me when i filed the trademark i needed to file trademark and wordmark to protect my logo so you just you got to have good people surrounding you Mm -hmm. that can advise you on good things so those are three things that happened that were little failures i mean they weren't big failures yeah but still there's setbacks and depending on the size of your pockets that's a different level yes yeah and as soon as you get successful people are going to try to knock you down and they're going to figure out a way and i call them trolls because they legit go and look for websites that aren't handicapped compliant and i'm trying to think of the app that we use to make that it's so inexpensive to make it compliant hmm. i will find it let you know yeah so we'll let put it in the viewers. show notes yes, yes because it's important to do that and it, it's minimal cost the same with filing your trade and wordmark you don't have to pay a fortune to do that right. so and and the ironic thing about that it that cost me millions because the first food food show i was going to albertson's picked us up but then our competitor went out to albertson's and he thought it was us <gasps> he got us confused because Cali Power, Cali Flower, we both had the O with the cauliflower. So there was a lot of confusion. And I lost Albertsons for like a year and a half. It took me to get back into there. Wow. So yeah, so it's really important for those things. Domains. Now, this is a little slimy, little schmarmy, but it works. Okay. So I share this just knowing that we did this. We weren't trying to be schmarmy or slimy. So go into this with you know, your integrity and and think about it. But we bought our competitors' domains and we bought every cauliflower name we could, like cauliflower rice, cauliflower crackers, because I knew it was going to be a big hit. Mm -hmm. And we would take those domains and we would send them to our website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd point and we direct. bought a lot of our competitors' names because she didn't. So okay. we bought her names and we would send them to our website. So that's another thing, like buy the names that are close to your name for SEO purposes. Like if they accidentally type, type in one letter like, wrong or something. We were Cali Flower because it originally it was supposed to replace California. white flower and we were in California. It okay. was never meant to be just cauliflower, but people type in cauliflower and I wanted that cauliflower rice to hit our website. So think about things like that with your name and think wow. about how people spell it and buy that domain name. Usually you can get them really cheap and yeah. then have it go to your website. It's really huge. Oh, I love that. Are you going to teach courses to help people with e-commerce so, biz? Because you have a wealth of knowledge. So part of my therapy during yes. the end of um, COVID, 
was to serve people. That's why yeah. I talk about volunteering and serving. So I took some brick and mortars and made them into click and order. That was the business, brick and mortar to click and order. And I have a few success stories. One okay. of the companies that I helped was a little smoothie shop and we ended up doing acai bowls and making them go online. So Jeff Finster, who does the uh, Ever Bowl, yeah. I was part of a 100 mil mastermind. And wow. so he was part of that and you could invest in that. So I'm like, well, shoot, he was doing it. Like this guy can do this. And so he just had an exit. So that's Yay. awesome. Yes. And then um, one of my clients who I helped just won the Nexty Award, which is like the Academy Awards in food. I never won that award, but I wanted it so bad. So I get to live vicariously yeah, through Perfect. Her. So now I'm thinking... I keep having these badass women reaching out to me and saying, hey, would you like to collaborate? So in the fall, I'm doing a business, faith-based business course with Kayla Craft. Do okay. you know who Kayla is? I'm you going... need to know Kayla. Yeah, I do. She's amazing. Perfect. Yeah. I'll have you introduce me. Yeah, definitely. And and then um, I'm doing something right here in Miami with Stormy Wellington, who you're going to... I interviewed today. Yes. Yay. Stormy and Sandy Gallant. So and I definitely will connect you with Sandy as well. Another awesome woman. Awesome. So yeah, I'm teaching people now how to take their business and find like that niche, like where they can expand their business, but really narrow it down. Let me give you a great example. Now, I didn't help these people, but this is a great example and, and a recent example. There's a company that was teaching people how to sell products online on Amazon in particular. And they were doing about $2 million a year. Oh, wow. And they did a business course and they learned that if they narrow who their target audience is, it will probably grow. So one of the questions, and this is a question I ask people, what are you really passionate about? So this particular couple loved the fact that they got to stay home, work together, and they love their kids. They love being at home with their kids. And so during the business course, they're like, okay, so you love being at home with your kids. What if you narrow your audience down to stay-at-home moms that want a side gig? Mm -hmm. When they did that, when they focused on stay-at-home moms that wanted a side business to sell on Amazon, their business went from two million a year to eight million a year in one month. In what? One, in one year. Excuse me. One what? year. Yes. And that just happened. That just happened wow. like last year. So I'm like, okay, that's how like I look at Google Trends. Like yeah. Soursop is straight up and like it's going up like this. I'm sure. Cauliflower is going down because it's kind of trending there. out now. Yeah. And they're done that. So I look at Google Trends a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you have an idea, you can punch it into Google Trends. I also use a SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So before I make a major decision that's going to cost money, mm -hmm. I, I think the SWOT analysis is more important than even a business plan. And so I do that with most of my decisions I make mm -hmm. so that I can see kind of outside the box. And so I think that's really important. But so I'm teaching that. I... And I learned, I was shocked by this, actually. I was speaking at an event. There was 75 nurse practitioners in this event. And they all want to leave their six-figure job and make seven figures. They're tired of the rat race. And I don't blame them and, the, and everything that's going on. Or some of them wanted a side gig. And when I said, have any of you done a business plan? Well, maybe 10 of the 75 raised their hand. I said, has anybody done a SWOT analysis? Only one person raised their hand. They had no idea what it was. Wow. Is it hard to do one by yourself, like for some of these companies? Or is it, could you hire people to help you do a SWOT analysis too? Yeah, you can hire me. Okay, perfect. <laughs> there we go. We know who we're hiring. I've got some businesses I want to run by you. So there we perfect. Yeah, so I do it a lot because I became an investor yeah. after I took money off the table. Of course. Now, openly, I will admit this. Five of the investments I made, only one of them is still standing, and it happens to be the one that's in real estate. The other four went under. But I think you need to do your due diligence, and I didn't. I leaned on somebody else to do the due diligence. Okay. So there's where I failed on that one. But yeah, so we, I lost us about a million dollars in those investments, uh, which is unfortunate. And more importantly, it makes me sad that they went under because there was some really good 
businesses. They're great businesses, but it's kind of a hard time right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really grateful that our business is thriving. Mm-hmm. And I think part of the reason why we're doing so well, and we've really only done a soft launch and I'm rebranding the whole product, the name is changing and the look of the product is changing. The product itself is staying the same because it's amazing, but the look of it is going to be different. And I need to do that early on because with Cauliflower, this happened. My multiples were declined. So the valuation of my company was less. It should have been a nine figure valuation. Okay. But because I named it Cauliflower and it was so close to cauliflower, I narrowed it down. And this is where narrowing it down is probably a mistake is having the name of that particular product limits you to expand outside that ingredient. Right. Because once you have the buyer, now what else can you do? Yes. Open the doors for them too. So I had an eight figure valuation instead of a nine figure, even though if you look at the EBITDA and everything on the deck, it should have been a nine figure. Mm-hmm. So with Soursop, I'm at Bo- in Boston and my financial investor that helped me create the deck to sell cauliflower is like, Amy, didn't you learn? Like you have Soursop. It's in the name. And I said, well, actually the name of our company is Be Me yes. Beyond Medicine. And be me is doing business as soursop right now and there's a strategy behind it nobody knows what soursop is but when they google it i want us to come up so that's why i picked that name for now and now that we've educated people on soursop and we're getting a little bit of a buzz through affiliates and influencers really more so than paid ads Mm -hmm. although i hear tiktok shop you should do ads on tiktok Mm -hmm. so we're going that route um, I've heard that's really We might successful. have you on again later and get the update on how that worked out. We're just doing it right now. And actually, that company that I talked about that narrowed down their niche to stay-at-home moms, they're actually doing TikTok shop with our products, too. So we're letting okay. other people take our products at a, a wholesale cost and do the same thing. So, yeah, so we're rebranding. It's going to be Be Me, all the future products that are coming out. We have a skincare line coming out. Mm. Everything that we're doing too, I think you have to differentiate yourself. So when I look at the companies that went under, I'm like, did they differentiate themselves enough? Did they have a community? You know, were they doing customer service above and beyond? Mm -hmm. And I can say that they were probably not on one of those things. So yeah, we, we want to have great affiliates. We pay a huge amount to affiliates. Like you can make a living selling our product, a six figure living. Amazing. And then customer service. I've always had more people taking care of our customers than sales reps. I think that's so important. The customer experience has to be amazing over the top, mm-hmm. which we did. We would we would focus, instead of highlighting the customers that love what we did, we would go to the disgruntled customer and make a special point to take care of them and turn them into affiliates. So if you can take somebody that's had a negative experience with your product and have them selling it and have them become happy, they like go over the top of praising because you really like people just want to be heard. Yeah. You know, they want to, especially if you've got a really vocal person that's unhappy with your business and they're talking and they're, they're telling everybody nine times out of 10, they're unhappy with themselves to begin with. Right. And so if you can cater to them and make them feel special you can turn them around. And then if they're an affiliate for you, bam, you're golden. So we did that a lot with cauliflower and we're doing it with sour sop. And um, having you know great products, the other way that we're differentiating ourselves is anybody can throw out a supplement. They're yeah. not regulated right now. And right. it's really sad to see some of the products that are out there. Oh, it's insane. So the thing that people aren't doing is they're not spending the money to do the clinical trials. And while I'm anti-Western medicine, I'm pro-clinical trials, especially like a double-blind placebo-controlled one. And that's what we're doing with the supplements. And then with the skincare line, we're partnered with this phenomenal, well-known dermatologist out of New York, and he's doing a biopsy, which is very expensive, clinical trial on our skincare line. Wow. The skincare line is phenomenal. It's like Botox in a bottle. Woo! And you can't, like, I keep giving it away, all of our samples to have testers on it. And yeah. Because pe- I want people that aren't doing anything, like no Botox. Like, I really want to see. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what it actually does. And they're having phenomenal results. So I know the Amazing. biopsy is going to be great. But we're the the magic ingredients, and they're out there, is Irish sea moss. Okay. It's phenomenal for your skin. And then Soursop. 
Yeah. And then we've got other ingredients. And it's an all natural line. And our skincare gummy is all natural. Wow. So we use citrus flavors. We don't use any artificial sugars or anything like that in the skincare gummy. Amazing. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. It's amazing. Good yeah. for you. So going back to your question about if I'm going to teach people, I I feel like that's the counseling was phenomenal, but I feel like helping others yeah. and helping them have big success was so therapeutic for me. It's magic. It kind right? of got me back into the game. No, yeah. 100%. It's, it's one of those things where, like, if I can do it, fantastic. But then you become a part of somebody else's story doing it. And you're like, oh, my. It's like being a parent, yeah. right? Like, it's when your kid mm -hmm. does something that you, you're like, oh, oh I know. there's nothing better. <laughs> and speaking of kids, like, I thought, I don't know how much time we have left, but a question I get all the time, and I'm sure you do, and you've got to be an expert on this. How do you balance being a female entrepreneur, owning your own business, and being a mom, especially yeah. with the kids' ages that you have? Yeah. I mean, I'm hyper-intentional, <clears throat> right? And I look at my week on a weekly basis, and I just make sure I have one-on-one -on -one time plugged in with each person. Yeah. And that could be I'm driving you to school or I'm taking you to lunch today, or you have soccer practice, so I'm gonna make sure I'm the person driving you. Because I think people get lost in the quantity versus the quality. Absolutely. And I just hyper-focus on quality and just check in to make sure that I'm not letting time slide. Yes. What and about you? So I do the same thing, mm -hmm. and I will often turn my phone off yeah. because I noticed that my kids were really sensitive when I was answering questions, even though I was one-on-one -on -one with them. And the other thing I did that made such a huge difference, and a friend of mine told me to do this. My oldest is a big gamer. And I was like, you're addicted to games. Like, you're, this is bad. Like, you are you have addiction issues. You know, I'm all mm -hmm. worried about that. Like, all you do is game. You're hiding in your game. And my girlfriend's like, Amy, have you ever played his game? Like, do you even know what he's playing? Like, get in there and play with him. Yeah. So one day I decided to learn how to play his game. So it doesn't surprise me that he is going into his senior year as a mechanical engineer student. He's going to get a degree in mechanical engineer. But this game that we played was like building cities. Do you oh, yeah, yeah. Minecraft maybe? No, not Minecraft. It was SimCity? It might be SimCity. But it was like building. It was educational. And I'm like, oh my gosh, James, I'm so sorry. I've been criticizing you. And I just needed to spend time with you and play at your level. Like, do what you want to do, not make you do what I want to do. Yeah, I think that's you know, huge. That's huge. And yeah. so that changed our relationship big time. No, we, I love it. Yeah, we were always close. But once I could get in there and just be like, okay, you're a cool kid, and this is cool, and you don't have an addiction, and I'm going to own that I even called that out. Because now I want to play your game. Yeah. <laughs> I no, I love it. And I think someday he's going to invent some kind of cool game. Because right? he still plays a lot of games. And it's, it's yeah, he's oh. a great kid. So And he's doing so well in, in his mechanical engineering courses. I'm just like, oh. So, yeah, I love that you said you're very intentional because I think that's the key. It's a question I get all the time. You probably mm -hmm. do, too. No, I do. I get it a lot. And with me being scheduled gone when you're climbing a mountain, you're gone. Oh. Yeah. And so then I'm very intentional right before I go. And what are those memories like? And what are we talking about? And what are we doing? And when I'm gone, I'm also anticipating I'm being gone. So in our household, we had a jar of Hershey hugs and Hershey kisses. So anytime they wanted a hug or a kiss from me, they were allowed to have that at any point. I gave them a candle. And so anytime they wanted to tell me a message and they couldn't reach me, they were supposed to say it in their mind, light the candle and then blow the candle out and it blow to me. And it's just like you said earlier, right? You do these little traditions, these little rituals that connect you to each other, even though you're not physically in each other's presence. I love that. Yeah. That's I awesome. love that. I'm going to have to do that. I'm not gone as much anymore. I set yeah, boundaries on I'm this new either. business, but good for you. Yeah. I would, I would love, I've never climbed a mountain or never done I'll anything like that. We'll go. <laughs> we'll do something basic first. We'll get you addicted to the bug. Well, I, I ran a marathon. Woo. Um, I was 30 before yeah. I had kids. I ran a marathon because I was like, okay, I want to do something that's really hard. And that was really hard. But yeah. I remember the feeling of accomplishing something yes. so physical like that. Yes. And you know, Jesse Itzler, you watch yeah, him I do, of so course. He's so inspiring. Yes. I was just on stage. He was on stage before me and then I was on stage right after him. But after he got done talking, I was like, okay, I'm going to, I was told I would never be able to run again. I'm going to start running. I'm going to run a marathon again. Well, so. you're doing 75 hard right now. Yeah, but that's not, that's not marathon training at yeah, all. True. <laughs> and actually I've done 75 hard 
multiple times. He was in, uh, he was one of the instructors in our 100 mil mastermind. Okay. So Andy that created the app mm -hmm. and I did it multiple times. I got to the next level. So then I, I stopped doing it for a while. And then when the girls said, Hey, have you ever heard of 75 hard? I'm like, yeah, been there. And I put everything online. So when I was doing it and I failed it like three or four times before I actually made it through the 75 days, people appreciated sharing your failures. They do. So, I mean, it's so important. Yeah, I believe that success comes out of a lot of little failures and building the tolerance up to go through those failures. That's what real success is. Mm -hmm. So failing 75 hard was definitely a thing. And then when I finally made it, I had such a cheerleading online squad. Oh, like going, it was Yay! so cute. <laughs> so yeah, we're back. I need to do something though, physical, something to train for, something that... I think I can't do that I can accomplish because you've done that multiple times. Because it's addicting. Yeah, I have some ideas for you. So we'll share them offline. Okay. Yay. <laughs> All right. So everybody, buy the gummies, try them out, learn from this episode, share with each other and reach out to Amy and I because we're here to support you and serve you and make this world a better place. Yes. So and if you, you want to reach out to me personally, I actually take care of my own Instagram Hey. And it's Hey Amy Lacey, because Amy Lacey was already taken. So H E Y Amy Lacey. So if you DM me, I'll respond to you. It'll be me. And I'm happy to send you samples of Soursop to try. Yay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was so fun.